Hello, I'm Dr. Julia Lehman from Mayo Clinic Dermatology in Rochester, Minnesota, and the purpose of this video is to talk about Epidermolysis bullosa acquisita, or EBA. First, I'd like to talk about the clinical findings of this condition, and then how laboratory testing can help confirm the diagnosis, and finally, then touch on treatment options. The clinical findings of EBA include the development of tense blisters on the dorsal forearms and hands that heal with milia and scarring. Sometimes other areas of the skin and the mucous membranes may be involved as well. This clinical presentation may mimic that of Porphyria cutanea tarda, bullous pemphigoid or other pemphigoid variants, linear IgA bullous dermatosis, or bullous systemic lupus erythematosus. Because there is no pathognomonic skin finding in Epidermolysis bullosa acquisita, additional testing is necessary in order to confirm the diagnosis. The first of such tests would be a standard skin biopsy of lesional tissue, and this would be sent for hematoxylin and eosin staining. Microscopically, one would expect to see a posse inflammatory subepidermal blister, which may have neutrophils and may have a variable number of eosinophils. Neutrophil rich variants of bullous pemphigoid may mimic these histologic findings, as well as bullous systemic lupus erythematosus. The next test would be direct immunofluorescence, which is where the patient's skin, ideally a perilesional biopsy, is incubated with tagged immunoglobulin. And with EBA, one would expect to see linear deposition of IgG and sometimes C3. Linear IgG and C3 deposition along the basement membrane can also be seen in pemphigoid as well as bullous systemic lupus erythematosus. The next test would be indirect immunofluorescence with salt split skin. For this test, normal human skin is incubated with one mole of sodium chloride, which induces an artifactual split at the lamina lucida. Then, the patient's serum is tagged and incubated with the salt split skin. Now, because Epidermolysis bullosa acquisita is associated with autoantibodies directed against collagen 7, and because collagen 7 is located below the lamina lucida, one would expect that the pattern of immunoglobulin deposition would be in the base of the artifactual split. The same pattern would be seen in bullous systemic lupus erythematosus, because this condition is also associated with the development of autoantibodies against collagen 7. In conditions such as bullous pemphigoid, where the autoantibody would be bullous pemphigoid antigens 1 and 2, which are located above the lamina lucida, one would expect the pattern of immunoglobulin deposition to be in the roof of the artifactual blister. Now, these tests are fairly widely av available and can be helpful in differentiating amongst several of the subepidermal blistering conditions. However, in the research capacity, there are other tests that can be used to more accurately establish the diagnosis. One of these is collagen for immunohistochemistry. And in this test, the patient's lesional skin is stained with collagen for immunohistochemical stains, and this helps to identify the lamina densa. In EBA, we would expect that the patient's blister would be below the staining of collagen 4, as collagen 4, the lamina densa, is above uh, the collagen 7 in the skin. Other testing that could be pursued would be fluorescent overlay mapping and laser scanning confocal microscopy, electron microscopy, and ELISA, which can establish the presence of collagen 7 autoantibodies. Once EBA has been diagnosed, the clinician is faced with the challenge of treating this often chronic and refractory condition. While topical steroids may be helpful in limited or mild disease, often uh, corticosteroids systemic or uh, immunosuppressive, other immunosuppressive medications may be required in order to achieve disease control. Some experts have said that colchicine is particularly helpful as a first-line therapy in mild EBA, whereas intravenous immunoglobulin may be used for more severe cases. I hope this brief discussion of Epidermolysis bullosa acquisita has been helpful, and if you would like more information, I would refer you to the March 2009 edition of the International Journal of Dermatology, where you'll find a review on EBA. Thank you very much for your time and attention.